I had to call this meeting to order, please. Appreciate folks being with us today. The next item on the agenda is uh, a listen and learn. Our assistant uh, prosecuting attorney, uh, Stephen Darnell. And, sir, you are on. Excellent. Good morning, commissioners. I'm here to talk to you briefly. Hopefully, I know you have a very busy agenda as usual about community solar. And so I will note the quotation marks are intentional. So what is community solar? The General Assembly back in their last assembly session proposed in the House Bill 450, the language for what would ultimately not become law in Ohio. They suggested that the definition of community solar would be in summary, a facility of less than 10 megawatts in Ohio that had subscribers to it within certain facilities that could be owned by an affiliate of an electric distribution utility, which are your AEPs, first energy companies, but it couldn't actually be owned by the EDU based on the uh, changes in the electricity market in Ohio, the deregulation in the early 2000s. But, you know, given the way the legislator speaks, it's often important to break it down, and it boils down to a small-scale subscription-based solar project that allows individuals who live in other areas to buy or lease parts of a larger array so that they can make benefits on their electric bills from these solar facilities without actually having to put the panels up on their apartment in downtown Cleveland or worry about the location and the issues that they may face in that area. Other jurisdictions besides Ohio would allow for a wattage of less than 50 megawatts, but Ohio decided that they wanted to push for 10 but ultimately, that didn't pass House Bill 450 Diet Committee and has not been reintroduced in this General Assembly session. However, I will note that some individuals say community solar when they actually mean small scale solar. Small scale solar is regulated in Ohio, and that's simply a solar project that's less than 50 megawatts. So, a small scale solar facility is anything as long as it's less than 50 megawatts. And so given the way that Ohio regulates it, that means it can be anything of about 250 to 500 acres or less, all the way down to a solar panel on someone's home. And again, Ohio law very cleverly decided that regulation would depend entirely on the output of the solar facility. It wouldn't depend on the size or what sort of use you were making, what sort of panels, things like that. It's important to note that all of this regulation that has just come about in the General Assembly is in relation of the regulation put forward in Senate Bill 52, which now Magistrate Orsak spoke to you gentlemen about last year, and that was for facilities larger than 50 megawatts and went into effect in 2021, making changes to the Ohio Power Siting Board and the Public Utilities Commission and how the commissioners can interact with that process to control larger solar facilities. But House Bill 501, late in the term last year, it was an end of term bill, as you can see from the dates, January 5th being effective on April 6th, applies to anything less than 50 megawatts, copying similar terminology and using the previous thresholds put forward in Senate Bill 51. So House Bill 501 made three changes to the revised code, specifically adding a definition of small scale, small solar facility, to the regulations, the zoning regulations for counties, townships, and municipalities. In short, it basically said that it's any sort of electric operation with a single interconnection to the electric grid as long as it's less than 50 megawatts. However, for Fairfield County, the only relevant portion of those three changes is the portion relating to townships, as there's no solar or no zoning regulations on the county level. Importantly, 501 amended 519.231 within the township code and similarly within municipalities and counties to give townships extensive control over solar projects and wind projects. But it said they can regulate it with respect to the location, erection, construction, reconstruction, change, alteration, maintenance, removal, use, or enlargement of any small solar facility, whether publicly or privately owned, or the use of the land for that purpose within the township or the county of the municipality. So as you can imagine, that's a huge change that really opens the doors to all sorts of regulation by the townships. 
However, if the township wishes to go forward through the process in order to regulate solar, they would have to amend their zoning regulations via 519.12, which is again why there's no county level solution to or county level resolution action that can be taken in regards to solar, small scale solar facilities. Draft language has been made available to the township should they be interested in proposing it. Oh, how has that been made available? By the Ohio Township Association. They came out with it in consultation with Brochure's law firm and made it available to their members for them to review and take in whatever direction they wish in consultation with their legal counsel. Thank you. And just briefly to review revised code 519.12, since you would have no reason to be familiar with how townships and their zoning regulations. It can start one of three ways. The trustees pass a resolution to amend their zoning. The township zoning commission makes a motion to amend its own zoning or a citizen initiative is sent to the trustees, but that ultimately will end up before the township zoning commission any way it starts. As it's submitted to the township zoning commission, they have a public hearing and the forward a copy onto the regional planning commission for the RPC review. The RPC then turns around and provides the recommendations, approval, modifications, or denial of the amendments and modifications to the zoning code. It sends that on to the trustees after it's gone to the zone. Oh, nice. yeah. so if I'm open. Um, when you say anything less than 50, does that mean if someone lives in um, Walnut Township and wants to put solar on their roof for their own use, it's part of this? It is. Okay. It's, it's very, very extensive. Okay. Thank you. Um, bounces back and forth until ultimately the trustees, after they receive a more finalized form of the amendments to their zoning regulations, hold a public hearing, and they either adopt or deny the recommendations. If it is adopted by the township trustees, then the citizens have 30 days to have a referendum filed based off of the usual referendum requirements within the state of Ohio, 8% of the last general election in that territory. So again, to summarize everything, this does not change the existing regulatory scheme put forward by Senate Bill 52, which is anything over 50 megawatts. The statute allows for local control over small-scale solar and wind facilities, but those don't seem to be too pressing at the moment. And it places small-scale solar facilities under governmental subdivisions zoning codes for them to do what they see fit. Well done. Thank you. Any questions, Commissioner? I don't have any questions. Thank you for your presentation. Mr. Levesey, any questions or comments? Oh, thank you. Very well done. Thank you. Mr. Fix, anything additional? Yeah, so you guys work with a lot of townships. Do you know uh, other townships currently trying to figure this out? And Some townships have expressed an interest. Um, Amanda, how far west where they've been having difficulty with their solar facilities, expressed some interest in the resolution, but they will obviously be hampered by the size restrictions put forward in these new codes. Uh, Liberty has expressed some interest, but not much. Walnut has already put forward their resolution to the Regional Planning Commission, and that's working its way through the process. That was done without any input from the prosecutor's office, but we have not heard much from the other townships as of yet. It is important to note that two of the townships within the county do not have any zoning regulations currently, so they wouldn't be able to do any sort of amendments to their zoning code or regulate solar in any fashion since they don't have the original zone code. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. This time the commission sets aside an opportunity for voters or taxpayers to address the commission. If you would like to do so, please uh, to the podium and begin by stating your name and residential address. Do you have a three minute time limit, which we would appreciate your courtesy on. And we would ask that your comments be directed to the commission as to other members of the audience. Is there anyone who would like to address the commission at this time and under those? Good morning. My name is Ray Stephen. Same address as it had been for a year. Uh, I would like to comment on a few things that uh, a little over a week ago, we were able to, Judy and I both, to converse with uh, Robert Sprague, the Ohio treasurer, and we discussed some things about abortion issues from the standpoint that uh, a lot of things that are being taught in schools are not 
in favor of abortion, which is the way it should be. God made each individual and in what has happened too many cases in which the mothers wanted to have abortion and they were decided against it and they're very happy that they did charge, uh, go against it. But there's going to be a lot of money spent in Ohio to change what the uh, Supreme Court of the nation did. They put it back on the states and there's a lot of money coming into Ohio to change what we have as our constitution here in Ohio. And Robert Sprague was saying that we're going to try to defeat it and try to correct misinformation. And this is what it's all about. Information. That's true of almost any subject that comes up that needs a, a law or something like that. And really what it is, the fact is this nation was built on Christian principles and morality. And as long as we keep God before us and try to do morally what he has described in the Ten Commandments and through the scriptures of the Bible, we would be okay in all of our work, but we seem to have put God aside now, and we don't, well, I can remember when Judy and I were younger, that every meeting that was uh, in the counties and so forth, we went to in the schools, there was prayer. But back in the 60s, we took God out of the schools and prayer followed. So I would like to follow with prayer this morning for you, Jim, and the rest of us. Lord, guide and direct us in what we say and what we do, and help us to reach out to those that do not know you and explain our feelings and our guidance and what it's about. Because we know we were created by our Lord Jesus and it says so in John and the New Testament that the word was with God from the very beginning and the word refers to Jesus and he was with the Lord from the very beginning. And so we need to keep that in mind. And when problems come up, we need to refer to God for the answers, because he has the answers for us. Thank you. Amen. Anyone else would like to address the commission? Sherry Palmer, Walnut Township, 3464 South Bank Road. Um, <clears throat> I know you know I'm here because of solar. <laughs> We're trying to put a, a packet of information together for the commissioners. Um, however, one of the things that, that we're going to put in the packet is, and I thought this was a little more time sensitive, so I'm, I'm going to give you each a copy of this. This was put out, it has to do with Senate Bill 52. And but it was put out by um, the attorney firm that is actually handling the handling the fox squirrel project over in Madison County. Um, and on the last page, it has um, the local approval process. And they, so they've got the chart. And I don't know if you've got this already or not, but it kind of simplifies it a little bit. And I know, Commissioner Fix, you were wanting to wait until the application to the Ohio Power Siting Board was submitted before really kind of digging into, you know, some of this thing. But it, it's almost too late once it gets that far. Um, and so I'm going to give, I'm not going to read this to you, um, but I'm going to give each of you a copy of this um, because the whole process 
is not very transparent, especially in the beginning. Um, the project of the Eastern Cottontail in Walnut Township, that process has been going on for about five years. Public didn't know that because it's under AEP. It's not under Eastern Cottontail. It won't be under Eastern Cottontail until it actually gets applied for at the OPSB. That's when the general public can get on OPSB and see, oh, Eastern Cottontail, Fairfield County, because right now there's nothing there. Um, it's in the PJM process, but that's under AEP. It's not under Eastern Cottontail. So it's, it's, it's very misleading and it's very difficult for the general public to find out. Um, the other thing is that CBS had, uh, which one of the big three, believe it or not, uh, put out a story and it's on YouTube. Uh, the, the replay is on YouTube and they, they visited recycling places in Arizona. Um, one was for wind, one was for solar. Um, and then they also, uh, visited, uh, an actual solar site. They were replacing panels that were only three or four years old, not because they weren't working, because they said, well, because the new technology, um, you know, the, the panels are better now. So we're, and, and the, the, the newscaster said, well, so these are only three or four years old and you're replacing them. They said, yeah, because of technology. Well, in two or three more years, the technology is going to be even better to where you don't have to take thousands and thousands and thousands of, of farmland to have solar if you want solar. Ohio is not a very good state for large solar projects. If you want to put them on your house, fine. Um, and I was interested to um, hear the little presentation earlier, but I believe that the, the in-between solar projects are from five megawatts to 49.9 and below five megawatts is those are the ones that you know put on the houses their barns their buildings or, or whatever um, for personal use basically or or business use um, which as far as what i understand um, that was told to us is that um, people can do that, that this doesn't regulate them out of being able to put these things on their houses. Thank you. How are you guys doing today? All right. Well, I'm Adam Murray from Local 18. Um, I'm a business representative for uh, IUOE Local 18 Operating Engineers. Uh, the address is 1188 Evelyn Road, Columbus, Ohio, 43215. On behalf of the Operating Engineers Local 18, if I get this phone to work right, I'm here to support the approval of the Eastern Cocktail Solar Project. The Operating Engineers are the individuals who operate heavy equipment, equipment such as bulldozers, excavators, backhoes, forklifts, and so on. The roads and bridges you drove on were most likely built by, mem by members of Local 18 along with fellow union member trades women, fellow union tradesmen and women. These solar projects will help provide our members with numerous employment opportunities in turn, high paying wages, health care benefits, Friendship programs continue to grow because of the solar industry. If approved, the Eastern Cocktail Project will not only create jobs, but you can expect an economic impact, additional tax money, and clean energy for Ohio as a result for the, from the project. We encourage the Fairfield County Board Commissioners to support the jobs of the men and women of Local 18 by approving the Eastern Cocktail Project. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Anyone else who would like to address the commission at this time?
Good morning. Good morning. My name is Paris Walker. I live at 5543 Town Hill Drive, Canal, Winchester, Ohio. Uh, I want to thank you for allowing me to come before you today and uh, just share some of the efforts underway in the county as it relates to, to the economic development. I know that you heard from a few people in the building trades as it relates to utility scale solar, including from a colleague of mine. So I will be brief. As a representative of the laborers union, I want to personally express the importance of having good paying jobs in our region and working with the company who has made a commitment to us. We are thrilled that EDF has chosen Labor's District Council of Ohio as a partner on the Eastern Cocktail Solar Project. And we will guarantee that our skilled men and women will be a best in class project that Fairfield County will be proud of. Ohio has retired or announced for retirement more coal fired power plants than any other state in the union. Additionally, Ohio imports 20 to 25 percent of our energy from out of state resources. Energy transition is not a theoretical concept in Ohio. It is happening in real time and solutions are needed. Ohio should embrace the opportunity to create homegrown energy. We'll provide good paying jobs with benefits and pensions. We are excited about the opportunity to build Eastern Cottontail and be a part of building our energy future and creating a significant economic development project in Fairfield County. Thank you for your time. Any anyone else would like to address the commission? Good morning. Just a little confusion when you don't have a uh, printer working for you. And uh, that's been for two weeks now. And um, just wanted to cover some things. The worst atrocity in the history of the world has been confir confirmed. Uh, the media covers up the tracking of unvaccinated people. Yes, unvaccinated people are being uh, tracked by our people, our government now. Um, also, are you surprised that Fauci and Gates and DOD and the CDC are funded? Uh, they funded this lab over in Sudan. And additionally, a research paper from July 22 shows the lab was funded by the CDC and thanks to DOD's U.S. agency. While researchers investigate thousands of reports from post-COVID uh, jab, the CDC says there's no evidence. <clears throat> also, the bombshell. Pfizer and the FDA aggressively pushed COVID vaccine on pregnant women despite knowing that mRNA shot caused dire fetal and infant risks. They knew this as early as 2021 that it's COVID injection was not safe for pregnant women. And Big Pharma under investigation for the COVID vaccine fraud is the next headline. The Texas attorney down there, uh, Paxton, he's uh, begun looking into the claims. And um, yeah, it would be great if this was uh, um, being looked into by our own governor too, um, or attorney general. Uh, watch, well, we don't need to cover that one. Then, the uh, James Dobson warns that Biden has uh, planned to destroy America's sovereignty. God help us, he said, if we let this happen to our on our watch. And he also said, mark my word, if American, America gives up its sovereign rule as a nation, we could well lose our sweet land of liberty and effectively forsake every generation that has fought and died for it. God help us if we let this happen in, on our watch. Biden's plan would give the UN agency the power to shut us down 
and uh, tell us if we have to have a shot in our arm or tell us if we have to wear masks. It's a platform for, as he said, global governance. And Dobson also noted that the Bible, in the last days, there will be a one world government, a dominion that will keep people from buying or selling without approval, a way to a dictator. Next, the big uh, catch up, uh, Chelsea Clinton. She's pushing for the largest uh, childhood immunization effort, effort ever. She's coming for your kids, folks. Kids as young as kindergarten. Now, this is the largest childhood immunization effort ever. Government obviously doesn't think they have done enough damage to children and adults. And yet, mm, and if government is truly so concerned about health of Americans, then why do they not require immunization of all persons illegally crossing the border and entering into our communities? Okay, I will get these put together and then present them to Ani and, and Steve. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, by the way, my name's Judy. Stephanie Taylor, Habitat for Humanity, Southeast Ohio. Wanted to send a very big thank you up to the county workers that came out on Saturday. Can only imagine it was a lot of work. You guys got all the crosses done, from what I understand, which is amazing. If anybody's ever had to do that, they actually have to hand lift them up. Uh, so it it was a, a big feat, and thank goodness the weather held out for you. So we're excited about that. If you know of anybody that's interested in coming out on Saturday, we're going to do a women's build. Super pumped for that. And um, if you're out Thursday at the Chamber Awards, we were um, selected as the nonprofit of the year. So we're really excited and honored to be a part of that. So, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Anyone else would like to address the commission at this time? We thank you all for coming. Uh, Stephanie mentioned there that that some uh, county folks were out on the site this uh, past Saturday. Uh, I had initially said I would be there, and then I wasn't. Um, I had gotten my schedules a little messed up, but Saturday was um, my youngest son's uh, graduation from high university, so I was unable to make it. Um, but I hope that um, isn't in any way construed as uh, a lack of support. There's the morning team there. Um, we had um, utilities folks, economic development workforce. Um, we've had Brian from Common Pleas um, and county administration folks there. And then a family, um, I think, I can't remember where their house is in Lancaster. Yeah, so it'll be uh, Arnie. Okay. It's the Career Center building. Yeah, so they come and do some hours towards their house. And so they were there, um, uh, mom and three kids. It was awesome. Weather was perfect. Tony and Josh from Utilities get the gold star. They got there early and stayed late and were up on the roof pretty much the whole time. So, <laughs> so he likes to be on <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, Corey and his folks from JFS, uh, after we got all the trusses loaded up there and then the house wrapped, um, they came and stood up the trusses, which is what we all did last year. So thanks for doing that part for us. Um, I think uh, Robert there at the site was thrilled uh, that we had moved him ahead in his schedule. Yeah. Thank you very much. He's, a, he's an awesome worker there, Stephanie. He's he's a he's a real treat to work with. Well, the commissioners very much appreciate all the folks who were able to go out and be helpful uh, in this uh, effort. And we also extend our uh, congratulations to, to Stephanie at Habitat for your the recognition that you received. It will never be enough. 
uh, no number of awards or thank yous or congratulations will be sufficient to convey uh, what we think your organization, uh, led by you and our community anyway, uh, is accomplishing uh, uh, for, for folks that are, um, you know, really trying to, to make their way up the, the ladder, so to speak. Uh, and you're you're trying to just give them a little a little push, you know. Uh, and we think it's really cool, and we appreciate you. Oh uh, no! Hey, how y'all doing? <laughs> Anything on legal? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Stephen, you did a nice job today. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Move on to uh, administration update, Ani. All right, we can review American Rescue Plan update from the 30.6 received. Uh, 23.7 has been appropriated, 13.3 expended, and 4.2 encumbered or obligated. Um, and Bart and Jeff have done a great job with reporting and tracking. And we've had some folks um, have additional inquiries as of late, if there is funding available. And uh, we're pausing for a minute because we have a number of um, major projects that are outstanding and wanna make sure that we can properly fund those projects to completion. And if anyone is sharing a request with us, uh, Jeff and Bart are taking those in and making sure we've got that information to follow up if and when there is an opportunity to add additional projects to that list. And on that, if I might, on the schedule already is a coming update from Adam. Is that right? Correct. And when, what's, when are we supposed to get that update? Uh, next week, I believe. Let me double check here. Yes, next Tuesday. Yeah, and so given the order of magnitude of that project, you know, that's kind of the big dog in the room, if you will, in terms of kind of figuring out where the water is going to find its level in terms of the final analysis. So I know that my colleagues and I are all looking forward to, to hearing how they're doing and what that timeline looks like. So please. Continue. Uh, Google update at the Ohio Chamber. So last week, Rick and I had the opportunity to, att to attend the Ohio Chamber of Commerce event where Google officially announced that they are building a total of three fully operational data centers in central Ohio with one of those being located in Lancaster. Uh, we were also joined by the mayor, Linda Berge Disser, and um, gosh, Stephanie Bosco. <laughs> um, there at the event, they had a fun little Google uh, photo opportunity there. So it was a great morning. Um, and ABC did a um, an interview with Rick that shed a little bit more light on it. We good to roll that in it?
We're not waiting for six o'clock. Oh <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> I can ask a couple questions because I'm, you know, I know that some folks were under an NDA, a non disclosure agreement, with regard to some of the early conversations with Google. Um, it's, I don't know, a little bit odd to have an announcement that they're going to build when they've been out there building for a year or so and the other thing is uh, uh, and I, I i don't want to attribute this to anyone other than the street but the street version of the nda uh, involved more than one google data center uh in in lancaster or fairfield county so i i, I just I'm not sure that what we're hearing is all there is to be heard or if you know more about that, that you're even allowed to say, I don't know. And, and if you know, and Tony, you may know, I don't know, the, the, the new well field that is being constructed at Miller Park. Uh, again, for whatever reason, I'm not sure, but some of us were under the impression that the necessity for that new well field was in part driven by uh, the, the Google plans. Is that, that information accurate or, is, or, or people just adding one and one together and getting 11 on that? Yeah. Invest in something. Well, um, and Rick, I think you were going to share some information before I jumped in and started asking questions. So I'm sorry to have come. Well, I just a question about the weather. Uh, part of the reason why that is things are coming I don't have hurricanes, but I have earthquakes. How many blizzards you put in those uh, plus access to the those but that's a good reason why I'm sorry. And then Commissioner Lavisi. So um, last week uh, I had uh, one of my governor's workforce meetings, and this was part of the topic from 
then the governor used that Google he actually mentioned the Lancaster new facility and he also talked about AI extensively how it's going to affect the workforce and I think it's imperative of all of us to not uh, think about that and actually be concerned about that I mean there's obviously some good benefits but there could be some downside he, he used one illustration of uh, coding where there was a huge shortage of coders in the last couple of years and now that's totally gone away because of AI so those jobs are going to be totally eliminated per se so I think as we continue to think about workforce we also need to embrace technology in a big way because I think a lot of the jobs are going to shift that direction and so again I don't know enough about it it is way beyond my pay grade but I do know it it, uh, it it's something we need to think about talk about and, and know more about Mr. Fix, questions, comments, concerns. We need more housing. Ani, please continue. Okay. Highlights of resolutions. The review packet contains a list of administrative approvals. There are 14 resolutions for the voting meeting today. One resolution that I will point out, there's a resolution to reappoint Dr. Margaret Kwame to the District Library Board. And I was speaking with um, our library director, uh, gosh, I'm a loss for names today. Jade. Becky Jade. <laughs> Need a little more coffee, I think. Um, Becky and asked if she would be interested in coming and doing a brief presentation, just an update on the library, as well as inviting the rest of the other board appointees uh, that the commission does make. So in addition to Margaret Kwame, you also have Nathan Hale, Matt Weidman, and then Lisa Evangelista, who serve on the library board. So she's looking at some dates and will get back with me. Uh, recognition, happy belated birthday to Commissioner Levesey and to Sheriff Lee. Sheriff. Oh, I'm sorry. You went to Lee, recognitions? Yeah. yeah. I, I was uh, wanting to touch on budget review. Yeah, yeah. Bart, anything? Well, I did have a question that I wanted you to give some thought to, if you would. Yes, so, perhaps as early as next week, we may have a resolution uh, regarding uh, funding mechanisms for the airport projects. Um, I think the way that's probably going to look, I think there's some details to work out mm -hmm. still, but something along the lines of a $3 million um, bond issue, direct placement, something like that. Um, the thought being somewhere around 1.7 to 2, let's call it um, million dollars in cash. And what I wanted maybe you and Stacy to give a little thought to um, is kind of giving the commission a heads up when we looked at our carryover from 22 to 23, it was X. I'm shockingly not able to recall the specific number, but low 30s. Um, and then as we try to project, which I understand the difficulty in doing that, but to to see the impact of the one seven to two, of course it would have a negative impact on the carryover from twenty three to twenty four. But given the way things are going, it feels from thirty thousand feet like we'll hardly even notice because it looks today like revenue will probably exceed expense by some number greater than one seven to two. But that's just back of the napkin stuff on my part. And you all have more sophisticated tools to analyze that question. And I would just ask that you do that and then maybe kind of give us a, 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 a very early rough read on where you think the carryover is headed as we go into 24 with an eye towards perhaps a negative two on that. Right. Any questions or comments on that, Dr. Brown? No, I just reported last week we already adjusted for the investment income and that accounts very much for this change. I appreciate it. And then staying with kind of budget, um, how are you today? I'm doing well, thank you. Well, good. Um, 
I, I happened to be uh, passing through Savings Bank uh, yesterday, and Galen oh, oh. Couch, uh stopped Maybe. out to say hello uh, to me and said, hey, you know, I'd like to touch base with you and uh, follow up. It's okay if I give you my number and you give me a call. And I said, sure. And I asked him, I said, you know, uh, I assumed that the that his interest in talking to me had something to do with county. So I just said, well, I'm sure your office is talking to the treasurer's office, you know, because I know we had some investments there. Um, and he said, no, I, you know, other people handle that. But I just, is there anything going on with Savings Bank by way of context that I, I've? You know, there, my contact's actually in Circleville. Okay. Mark, and so that's who we talk to as far as investments. As you know, we had moved money from there to yep. Star Ohio because of difference in rate. And there, I keep them informed on what's going on. So we still have the accounts there with the uh, the land bank, still the savings bank. Okay, and we have a good relationship with them. Yeah, and it could be that, and and I'm speculating a little bit, but you know, when you go from a homegrown bank like Standing Stone was mm -hmm. to getting bought out by a savings bank. Maybe one of the things he wants to talk about is just trying to make sure that bridge between the bank and the community is still in place, so to speak. Feeling like maybe that got nicked up a little bit uh, in the uh, in the buyout. So but anyway, I'll, I'll give him a call and and see what's on his mind. Oh, good. All right. Sorry for the interruption. Please continue. Back to celebrating birthdays, Commissioner Levesey and Sheriff Lake. <laughs> and then an early birthday wish to our own Rick Zabrak. You're going to party it up on Saturday, huh? <laughs> want to thanks, uh, thank Angel Horn and Christina Wetzel for their assistance with some inventory items with IT. Um, thanks also again to the Habitat volunteer teams. Appreciated uh, their um, committing their Saturday to that project. And then lastly, County Auditor Dr. Brown thanked the Auditor's Office for being positive and welcoming the multi-factor authentication process that has begun being released throughout the county. So thanks to Dan and his team for um, making sure that we're ready to go there. Rochelle, calendar review and invitations received, please. Today, the commissioners have the uh, TID meeting at one o'clock at the Records Center. The planning next staff meeting is May 11th at the Fairfield County Workforce Center. The annual trade show dinner and awards banquet is May 11th at Fisher Catholic High School. The Workforce Center graduation is May 12th at 1130 a.m. at the Workforce Center. And an invitation was received to the Lanthopolis Annual Memorial Day Parade and ceremony to celebrate the 100th year anniversary of the Wagnalls Memorial. That is on May 27th, May 22nd at 10 a.m. And um, that is all I have for invitations. For correspondence received from the Fairfield County Regional Planning Commission, we have a stop work order notice issued to Palmieri Builders on May 2nd. From the County Auditor's Office, we have a press release dated May 4th titled Auditor's Real Estate Office Announces Online Address Change Option. And also from the County Auditor's Office, we have a memo Dated May 4th, subjects current agricultural use value program, board of revision cases, records request update, and lodging collection snapshot. We have a petition for a type 2 annexation of 1.412 plus or minus acres from Bloom Township to Village of Lithopolis. We have the Fairfield County Municipal Court Criminal Traffic Division fee report. We have the Fairfield County Sheriff's Office 2022 annual report. And the Fairfield County Heritage Association's newsletter, Fairfield County Heritage Quarterly, Spring 2023. Now, if you want to look at the screens, that's my favorite picture from the uh, the Sheriff's 2022 annual report. <laughs> oh, the little tiny key. <laughs> and we also have the letters and emails from Fairfield County residents regarding solar energy. That's all I have. Thank you, Rochelle. I don't have anything further. Thank you, honey. Well, business, uh, Commissioner Levesey. So uh, last week I had the opportunity to attend a uh, service down on uh, Bound Square and with uh, all law enforcement, uh, OSP and the Sheriff's Office and Police Department. 
and uh, it, it was, and I've attended these for the last several years, and this was probably one of the best yet. Well organized, I mean, good speakers. So, uh, you know, obviously we were there to recognize those officers who have lost their lives uh, here in Fairfield County uh, while they were on duty in the service of the county. But uh, more importantly, I think everyone that spoke, including myself, we talked about how we support law enforcement here in Fairfield County in a big way. And, you know, sometimes it's not just about, about a paycheck, but the appreciation that needs to be shown for those who are willing to serve. So I think that message was given, and I think it was a very good event. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Fix under old business. I have none this morning. Thank you. Yeah, just uh, this past week, I uh, had the opportunity to uh, give a speech, I guess it was, to uh, soil and water conservation district leaders from around the state regarding uh, budgeting from a county commission perspective. Um, my colleagues will be happy to know that of the hour I was given, I only used 54 minutes. So on time and under budget. Uh, but I, it went really well. I felt good about it. And uh, it was a good opportunity for uh, us to continue to broadly share uh, our fiscally conservative message with all who will listen. Under new business, um, anything, Commissioner Levesey? So uh, this week we have the graduation at uh, at the workforce center. I I do look forward to uh, seeing that because you you know it's a totally different perspective when you see some of these kids receive their certificates. And I guess Commissioner Davis will be speaking, so I also look forward to to hearing what he has to say. Me too. <laughs> uh, Fifty four minutes worth. I, I've, I've only been given a half hour. Oh, okay. Okay. in the HVAC class, it's going to talk about what it's like as a female. In the it's just pretty eye opening, uh, but also for a question is amazing. Hearing them talk about possibly the same direct adults when they come here. That's uh, what we're trying to do. So it's, do you have any information or uh, stats on the number of jobs that are already secured that these folks have locked into? So, all 54. Gotten jobs, but uh, some will not. Some are. That's through the school year. Some will be staying on. So I get the final numbers, but there's the word. Okay. So if I may, hopefully. Commissioner Levis. So at our workforce uh, board meeting, that was one of the big topics. Matter of fact, we had a couple of folks speak that were graduates of career centers. Uh, one in construction, the other in technology, uh, technology repair, kind of interesting, but uh, and, uh, that much of that meeting had a, a big focus on what we're going at the workforce center on that kind of operation. So I think we're ahead of the game. Commissioner Fix under new business. Hi, Wednesday. Thank you. Rick, just a question. If there's a there's a YouTube personality that I, I see once in a while. His name's Francisco. It doesn't matter. But when I first saw Francisco on YouTube, he had 39 chickens. And then, I don't know, a few weeks later, he's talking again, and he's got 38 chickens. And there was no explanation given for what happened to the, the other chicken. I was first told there would be 55 people graduating, and then this morning I hear 54, and I want to know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Commissioner Fix. 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 Commissioner Fix.
discussion. Okay. We could, Fair enough. Sometimes the chicken stuff come back. <laughs> <laughs> Francisco is a poker player. If anybody wonders why I'm on YouTube, yeah. Um, all right, keep us going, <laughs> Dr. Brown. We talked a little bit about the current agricultural use valuation program in the past. And an interesting statistic that has recently come to light is that 62% of the total acreage in the county is within that particular program, and it results in an average of $2,700 of savings annually um, for the property owners. And so just wanted to point out that statistic about what it means specifically for people who are in that particular program. When I came in, I saw Randall, and I was thinking about the low-income housing and House Bill 45 actually had some negative impacts to those that are making affordable housing and the fact that you can't have the combination of uh, historic preservation credits along with low income tax credits. But it also did one other thing that is new and it'll be new for the valuations of 23 for collections in 24 in that the county auditor can now use multiple methods of that valuation that it could not use previously. You can use market approach, income approach, and combine those approaches even with cost approaches, which is different. And so we in the county auditor's office, we don't know about which of these properties are considered low income, you know, housing credit type properties. So we're reaching out and asking for people who are connected with these properties to let us know so that we can gain information and um, have good valuations in place prior to a board of revision process. So I reached out to Fairfield Homes, knowing just in general that they did have some of these properties. But if you have a list of all these properties, I would like to have that list so that we can reach out to everybody and so that more information um, can be provided as we think about those valuations. Thank you. On the schedule today, there is a uh, resolution for an unclaimed funds transfer. That's a normal process from 2017 after five years pass and it's um, unclaimed and then moves to the general fund. So $33,674 is going to the general fund from unclaimed. There is a process to get it out of the general fund if there's a need to do that, but this is just the normal process for moving those funds. Thank you. Um, I'm going to be teaching at a prison um, on Saturday at the Marysville prison. And um, if there's anybody who's interested in joining in that volunteer effort, there's a lot of room for that type of advocacy and it's very rewarding. And I, I've enjoyed it quite a lot and have been using a lot of the information that I received in the FBI Citizen Academy to teach these classes. So it's a good, it's a good connection and it's very rewarding and very encouraging. Thank you very much. Anything you want to share? Uh, just quickly, House Bill 134, which is a it's very early stages and has impact on the land banks, not so much land banks, but more so the treasurer's office working with land banks. But as, as far as when we sell tax liens to the treasurer's office, then they want us to go ahead and notify all lien holders. So we gave some testimony uh, last week on this, and um, right now we're not in favor of it as far as the treasurers go. That's current state, so we're trying to work through that with the re representative from Cleveland proposing the bill uh, with support of the uh, Ohio uh, County Treasurers Association. So keeping a close eye on it. It really changed the way that we sell tax liens. And I understand what you've said about 134 in the House. If you know, is there a companion piece yet working its way through the Senate? Not to my knowledge. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Is there anybody, the issue or item that anybody would like to bring the attention of the commission at this time? <clears throat> Just uh, a note on the schedule. I have to leave after our voting patterns. So I won't be able to attend the hearings. I object. <laughs> recognize your objection and <laughs> move on. Duly noted. Go up for bigger meeting. I can't carry all the stuff.
need anything else? No, I'm fine. Thank you. Please rise if you're able to join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, the liberty of the best of our. Thank you. Michelle, do we have any announcements? Yes, we do. Today is Wear Orange for Supervised Visitation. As you will notice, there are several of us around the room in our orange today. I missed in that. support, yep. I don't have any orange. <laughs> <laughs> And Corey's thing is hair. Yes. <laughs> oh. I'm not sure what color I would have worn that I remember, but last night, Lois says to me, hey, Steve, I need a couple things out on your dresser. Would you please wear something decent, like what I laid out? That's why I don't have a hoodie on today, but if I got a purse, so hopefully that was just a one-off thing. We can get back to these <laughs> next week. Any additional a picture to prove it? <laughs> no, don't. Um, Michelle, any additional announcements? Yeah. Go to the approval minutes for May second, twenty twenty. So moved. Second. Discussion. Commissioner Fix. Yes. Commissioner Levitsy. Yes. Commissioner David. Yes. Minutes past three zero from the commissioner's office. Resolution twenty twenty three dash five dot nine dot a, a resolution approving the reappointment of Dr. Margaret Kwame to the Fairfield County District Library Board. The commissioners move items A, B, and C. Second. Discussion. Commissioner Fix. Yes. Commissioner Levesey. Yes. Commissioner Davis. Yes. Motions passed three zero. From the Fairfield County Auditor Finance Department. Resolution 2023-5.9.D, a resolution authorizing a fund to fund transfer, Auditor Fund 10A. So moved. Second. Discussion. Spoke about earlier as far as the transfer to the fund. Thank you for the discussion. Commissioner Fix? Yes. Commissioner Levesey? Yes. Commissioner Davis? Yes. Motion passes 3-0. From the Fairfield County Engineer's Office, Resolution 2023-5.9.E, a resolution to approve a contract with j, j Bridge Company Incorporated for the GRE 13 FAI CR 31 5.457 Coompath Road over a tributary to Fetters Run Bridge Replacement Project. From the Fairfield County Engineer, I move items E, F, G, H, and I. Second. Discussions? Start date on those after we get the contracts finalized. And, uh, we don't issue like orders, and we couldn't issue orders. But on behalf of the commission, I want to thank you for coming to our meetings. I think that's nice. And occasionally, some question comes up or something. But um, I, I think that's really cool for the commissioner's office to be represented here. And I just want to express our appreciation. Thank you. Further discussion. Commissioner Fix? Yes. Commissioner Levesey? Yes. Commissioner Davis? Yes. Yeah. Motions passed 3 0. For Fairfield County Family Adult and Children First Council, Resolution 2023 5.9.J, a resolution of a grant amendment between the Fairfield County Board of Commissioners as administrative agent for the Fairfield County Family Adult and Children First Council and the Ohio Department of Job and Family Services. The Fairfield County Family Adult and Children First Council, I move items J. And K. Second. Discussion. Second. 
training that staff received as an incentive and then uh, additional funding to support our multi-system fund. Thank you. Further discussion? Commissioner Fix? Yes. Commissioner Levison? Yes. Commissioner Davis? Yes. Motions passed 3-0. From Fairfield County Job and Family Services, Resolution 2023-5.9.L, a resolution regarding a service agreement between Functional Training Services Incorporated and Job and Family Services Community Services Division. New Job and Family Services, I move items L and M. Second. Discussion? These may look almost identical, but for they're for different programs within JFS. Thank you. Further discussion? Please call a roll. Commissioner Fix? Yes. Commissioner Levesey? Yes. Commissioner Davis? Yeah. Motions passed 3-0. Payment of bills, resolution 2023-5.9.N, a resolution authorizing the approval of payment of invoices for departments that need board of commissioners approval. So moved. Second. Discussion? Please call the roll. Commissioner Fix? Yes. Commissioner Levesey? Yes. Commissioner Davis? Yes. Motion passes 3-0. The next regular meeting is scheduled for May 16th at 9 a.m. All right. So. Before we have that next motion, I just want to make sure that I and I guess others are clear on today's schedule. At 1030, we have the CDBG hearing, right? Correct. And who is conducting that? Holly doing that? Holly, yeah. Holly, yeah, along Holly with Hicks the partners. partners. Um, uh, regional planning director. Right. Did you say Hicks partners? Yes. Michelle? Yes. All right, so that's at 1030, right? Correct. And then at 11, we have Chip, is that right? Correct. And Randall, are you on point on that? I am. Right. And so from a uh, procedural standpoint, we adjourn, and then those meetings stand alone, so to speak, as CDBG and Chip meetings, right? So as a commission, we're out. Um, or do we stay in? I think we stay in. I think you should stay in session for those. I think we stay in. Uh, they, they will lead them, but they are your public hearings. Right. Which, which won't have Commissioner Fix. Correct. Right. Okay. So, <laughs> even though this, this might incorrectly stay in the this conversation every time I point out stuff that you. <laughs> so I would just recess Commissioner Davis. I'm trying to help you out here. Um, and uh, then you can go back. Is there any other issue item that would like to bring the attention to the commission before we recess until 1030 when we will have the CDBG hearings? The commission is in recess. We thank you all for coming. Thanks,